All right, so this is what a buffet breakfast looks like in Israel. Lots of cheeses. Green. More cheese. Cheese. Olive cheese. mozzarella cheese and you have your uh, various oats flax seed sesame sunflower seeds raisins you have a uh, much more vegetable and salad heavy lots of olives and fish that's right, fish for breakfast. Various kinds of fish. More olives, uh, various toppings and spreads here. Chocolate, uh, some fruits, grapefruits, and peaches, melons. And you guys know what those are in America. Uh, eggs. I don't know what that is. Ravioli. Ravioli for breakfast. And way more vegetables. Lots of salad for breakfast. Paul Copan getting, what are you getting? I'm getting a, a, a lot, a latte. So, but just a little bit of it, not a latte. Hey, look, we got Tim Stratton here. This is how I eat every look day. Look at this dude. It's all like nuts and raisins and stuff. <laughs> That's how you stay in shape, ladies right. and gentlemen. But it doesn't help your hair. No. <laughs> Wait, he's got pancakes oh, too. Thank you. And that yeah. is what Brett Kunkel is eating. <laughs> I got an egg. He's got Protein. An egg. <laughs> What's up, Act 17, Bobby Conway here. Stoked to be in Jerusalem, the Holy Land, and traveling with David Wood and another group of uh, great apologists. We're just having a great time this week. I hope that uh, you're enjoying the vlogs that David's putting together, and uh, all the best. This is a great land right here. This is where it all happened, where the Lord died and rose again for our sins. And uh, be praying for David because uh, he makes us a little bit nervous being in the Holy Land. We don't know what kind of trouble we're going to get into. Uh, so we're just kind of hoping that we'll be safe. You know, uh, he stirs things up. So good to be here, though. Bless you. Well, this is the view from the Mount of Olives after the destruction of the temple during the Roman Wars. The Mount of Olives became a main pilgrimage site for Jews because they could overlook the temple area and weep for the destruction of the temple. All right, let me just give you an idea of the terrain. So this is the Dome of the Rock, and this was the site of Israel's ancient temple. So Solomon would have built a temple on that location, and later temples were built there as well. It was eventually destroyed by the Romans. Uh, part of this wall goes back to Herod, part of it is newer. So this is the temple ground, looking over here from the Mount of Olives. Uh, down here, this is the historic location of the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus was betrayed and the soldiers came to capture Jesus. Although no one can be positive about the location, but uh, Gethsemane means oil press and there are very, very old olive trees down here. Uh, but it's possible that it could have been a little bit north, would have been very close though, somewhere, uh, somewhere in this area. The western slope of the Mount of Olives is a cemetery. Uh, I'm not sure you can see, I'll try and zoom in. There are uh, holes on the sides of these uh, tombs that you can see there. Those are for placing candles in. The bodies are actually uh, underneath. Uh, in the ground, but those are for lighting candles. So the western side of the Mount of Olives is a cemetery, and then you have uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. The valley in between here, this is the Kidron Valley, 
uh, Jerusalem. Uh, there are three main valleys that are important to Jerusalem on the east. So we're on the eastern side of Jerusalem. And it's the Kidron Valley that runs down here. And uh, then there's another valley uh, sort of in the middle of Jerusalem. And then there's one on the west. Now, um, as far as what was Jerusalem during the time of David, that was actually over here. So this would have been uh, the area of the city of David. And uh, later, um, Jewish rulers sort of expanded northward and westward. So uh, under Hezekiah, uh, they, they expanded north. And then as history moves on, uh, you see the city uh, expanding north and west. Uh, didn't really expand east until much more recently. So the Kidron Valley is the um, classic uh, boundary of Jerusalem. Now, let me see if I can get it here. So that's the Dome of the Rock. And if you look past it to where you have these other dark domes back there, uh, see right there, that is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which we'll be visiting. All right, now you know the geography. Lots and lots of people buried here on the Mount of Olives. This is an example of a first century BC Jewish tomb. So this would have been a cave, but the, uh, the top has eroded off so that it's actually open now. But you see the different parts. There would be some sort of raised area for preparing the body. Then they would uh, put the body in one of these um, one of these openings and leave it for a year. And then they would come back and collect the bones uh, and have those together in a, in a spot. And so this is a, it's an early example of what tombs were like if you had a lot of money. These are ossuaries where bones would be collected after the bodies decomposed. This is the main proposed location of the Garden of Gethsemane. Some of the olive trees here have been carbon dated at around nine to 10 centuries old. And at least one is claimed to be around 2000 years old. See these offshoots inside of an olive tree? You can cut these off and as long as you get some of the root, you can actually plant those and it becomes an olive tree. The Garden of Gethsemane. So Jesus either came here with his disciples on the night he was betrayed or somewhere very close by. Uh, this it's where Jesus prayed. It's where his followers wouldn't even stay up watching for him. This is where Peter struck the servant of the high priest when they came to capture Jesus. This is where Jesus told Peter to put away his sword. And this is where they captured Jesus and took him to his trial. Now here's what's interesting. So, Garden of Gethsemane, this is where Jesus came with his disciples. Keep in mind, people in Jerusalem were looking for him, and he came here. But look how close he is to Jerusalem. So that's the Temple Mount. Why, why would he come here? if he wanted to escape. He could have kept going east over the Mount of Olives and been safe in some place like Bethany. Why did he stop here? Seems that he wanted a little extra time with his followers. He wanted time to pray, but he also knew that they had to find him. That's a pretty dope view. I'm looking up at the Mount of Olives from the city of David. Mount of Olives, very important in the New Testament. Jesus spent most of his time 
teaching in Galilee, but when he was in the Jerusalem area, he taught on the Mount of Olives. This is where Jesus wept for Jerusalem. This is where he prophesied the destruction of the temple. This is where he ascended into heaven. Finally, I'm getting the proper respect. A Song of Ascents by David. I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet stood within your gates, O Jerusalem. The built up Jerusalem is like a city that is united together. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Those who love you will be serene. May there be peace within your wall, serenity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and my comrades, I shall speak of peace in your midst. For the sake of the house of the Lord, our God, I will request good for you. All right, so this is actually a model of Jerusalem. Here, obviously, we have the Temple Mount, and here we have uh, the city. This is the old city, and the old city is separated by this wall. And over here, we have the city of David. So notice the city of David is actually outside what's called the old city. And there was a reason the city of David would have been here, and the reason would be, there's your water. There's your water source, a brook that ran through the Kidron Valley. Up until very recently, this was all underground. It's finally being excavated. This is the city of David. But what's interesting is that even though it's hard to tell, this is actually the base of a wall and then the wall actually cuts over this way, goes down under here, and yes, these are remains of a massive thick wall. So if you have a wall going this way, and then it cuts over that way, you have a corner of a massively important building. And uh, the going suggestion is that this was such a massive building that it was the palace of King David. And this is dated to 10th century BC, so the time frame would work. One thing I wanted to point out, notice that from this palace, you would be overlooking houses in the valley, where if someone were bathing on the roof, you would see it. Check this out. Again, this is only being excavated recently, but in the book of Jeremiah, we read and Zedekiah the king sent Jehuchal the son of Shelemiah and Zephaniah the son of Maaseah the priest to the prophet Jeremiah saying, Pray now unto the Lord our God for us. This is interesting because they found a seal of Jehuchal son of Shelemiah. So we know that was an actual guy. Hey, this is cool. Archaeologist is actually taking us down to the current dig site. This tunnel, if you go all the way down, goes to the Pool of Siloam, which is where Jews would perform ceremonial washings before heading up to the temple. And obviously, if you had to get from that pool to the temple, there's going to be a road. And this is a 2,000-year-old road. So way behind me is a tunnel leading to the Pool of Siloam and... We are on a very old road heading out of here. Now above us, apartments and roads. So this is all being dug underneath, which is why you have all these supports. These have to be installed so that things don't start collapsing. So this was the road and here 
was an actual sort of podium beside the road for making announcements. This originally had a palm tree growing on it, and the person who's standing with the palm tree, you knew that you were supposed to listen to the message that this person was conveying. This is what you find if you dig under a parking lot in Jerusalem. Hold the door for the people behind you. Yes, I'm coming over. Lema, I'll exit the door. As you walk through to the tunnel, you will see that you step, you step, and then you get out of the tunnel to the left because the foundations be over here are the modern road above. We saw these foundations; they were drilled down without knowing they're drilling into the tunnel. Water sister. Good. So let me tell you a pretty story for you as I was trying to figure out the uh, video over here. There's a reporter, a Qaeda reporter. Sorry, not a Qaeda, Al Jazeera. You know Al Jazeera? Uh -huh. um, and he reports um, as if I walk in front of the camera, so he's talking to the camera and walk in the tunnel. I, you obviously, I mean, if you know the tunnel, you recognize it. And he's telling to the people that, that he's reporting to that he's, it's, this is a tunnel that the Jews have dug under al -Aqsa to be able to explode it or to, uh, you know, to damage it. Now, it's ridiculous because we're not even close to Temple Mount. We're not, we're, we cannot go under Temple Mount. All the tunnels that are existing under Temple Mount from the time of Herod are blocked by the Israeli police with sensors and big blo concrete blocks so no one will be able to go and do anything. And, uh, <laughs> and that's really ridiculous, but no one knows. When he goes into this tunnel, you, you know, and you're living far away out of here and you're not a tour guide or you know, you've never been here, you will just be living. So you're saying it's, it's uh, bad reporting? Bad? I would say it's uh, false reporting, <laughs> more than just bad. It's just a lie, you know. And, and you can find it on the, online, his report, it's funny. Foundations of the Western Wall. How old are these rocks? Yeah. 2000. This is the Western Wall. So this is Herod, right? Herod, or maybe finished after him. But he is the, the one who started the project. All right, so we were just looking at the foundations of that. All right. 
So we just came from underground there. That is the western wall. That's the southern wall. Currently, but what we're looking at in the ground is really old. This pile of stones has been unmoved since the Romans tore this down. This is the western wall. You see those bushes? Recently, this was all underground. It's excavations that uncovered all of this. Now here's what's interesting. See this? See these structures jutting out? This used to be one side of an arch and where it starts angling out, the arch would have went up this way and come down on this side. No more. It's destroyed 70 AD. So this is the southern side of the Temple Mount. And that is supposed to be silver. It's turned black. All right, so you have that. And you go through this. And it continues. It's all the southern end. This is the basement window of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And you can see a Muslim in there reading. So if we zoom out a little, we see this black dome, which is supposed to be silver, but it's turned black. Lots of times the entire uh, temple area will be referred to as the Al-Aqsa Mosque. The, the mosque proper is here. Then there's the Dome of the Rock. That's with the gold dome. And that's more of a shrine than a mosque. This is the southern end of the Temple Mount, and you can see three arches that have been filled in here. Now, those arches were after the time of Jesus, and then they were filled in still later, but this was the location of the gate called Beautiful, and Jesus would have entered Jerusalem through this gate. Now, these steps are modern, but Jesus would have walked up here and entered the temple area through a gate that used to be here. So we are standing where Jesus once stood. singing Vincent here in Jerusalem. <laughs> 